The relationship between humans and animals is a complex one. What distinguishes humans as a species? And how much animal is there inside of us? It's these questions that photographer Tim Flack explores in his work. The results are portraits that appear nearly human. Some seem to belong on the pages of a high-gloss advertisement. Many have appeared in important international publications, from National Geographic to the New York Times. What I'm often wanting to do is place the animal, you might say, out of, out of its context of a jungle, be it, or Sahara, or in this case, the rainforest, and pla place it against a neutral background so that we can explore what does that animal mean to you. The photos require a great deal of preparation. Tim Flack takes most of them in his London studio. Today, two reptiles are taking part in the shoot. Animal handler Mark Amy has a lot of experience with dangerous animals, and he's been working with Flack for years. Today, he's brought along a Jackson's chameleon and a horned sand viper, an extremely poisonous snake from the Sahara. Well, both um, are um, susceptible to high levels of stress. Uh, vipers particularly, if he starts striking all over the place and estivating or, or sidewinding, that's not such a bad thing because that's his defense. And then he'll settle. And once he's settled, that's when we're going to get the best shot. A plastic model is used to help set up the lighting. If you come in with it, you'll freak. Chameleons are sensitive creatures. It's important not to place the animal under too much stress. Flack studies the animal's natural behavior during a test run, and then he adjusts his camera settings. He takes just a few photographs, searching for that one special moment. This thing of not knowing quite what will happen and responding to it. I'm a great believer in the creative process. Although you may set up the framework and invite a particular animal with an idea in mind, the danger is, is being too locked into that. And it's really important to, in a sense, let things reveal themselves. His latest book is called Evolution, and it's now also been released in Germany. It's a collection of his photography that retraces the animal kingdom from aquatic creatures to the great apes. Tim Flack has also had numerous solo exhibitions. Two of his dog portraits have even graced stamps in Britain. He's also done work for major ad campaigns. He originally studied communication design before turning to art and photography. I'm often playing with iconography in my studio work, often referencing either art or, or, or just a, a, a relationship to what is the popular or cultural reference to that subject matter. Prior to evolution, he'd released three books of his own photographs, including ones on horses and dogs. His portraits of bats are almost uncannily human. Other photos demonstrate how humans shape and manipulate animals. What I'd like to achieve is to really be there as a conduit for, as a visual conduit, you might say, a visual kind of catalyst for other voices to use it to look at some of the debates about how we manage animals in the human space, which I believe are some of the prominent questions that lie ahead of us, the, the conundrums of our own success as a species and what that throws up. Tim Flack is always looking to capture layers of meaning. Like this snake, its scales enhanced to emphasize their primeval quality. His images let us imagine the emotions of animals and reveal the animal in all of us. <laughs> 